Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's episode of the Mastering Retention Podcast. Uh, today, oh, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to introduce myself. I'm a terrible host. Uh, I'm, I'm Tom Hammond, uh, <laughs> co-founder of UserWise um, and your host today. Um, I'm just so excited to get to you, Daphna, that you know I, I can't stop myself. Um, so we have Daphna Ben on today, uh, who is Director of Monetization at SciPlay, um, which is super exciting. Um, you know, I never knew this before, but I actually went to college in Cedar Falls, Iowa, um, where SciPlay like, is based. I know they've got a pretty big Austin office now, but I had no idea that it even existed when I was at, you know, you and I up there. Um, but come to find out later, small world, there's this like really big gaming company based in Cedar Falls. So could have been a dream college job, but I, I missed that opportunity. <laughs> um, but anyways, I, I ramble. Um, Daphna. Uh, I always like to ask, like, what's your story? Like, how'd you actually get into games? For sure. So first of all, hi. Um, our founder always says that um, we're the only company founded in Cedar Falls, Iowa, that was um, IPO'd on, on uh, NASDAQ. So we are actually super proud of that. It's a huge company, and it all started there 20-something years ago. Yeah. And that's super exciting. As for me... Um, I guess after college, I was looking for an opportunity and it was, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago, I think. And um, a friend of mine suggested that I uh, apply for a marketing job at a company. It was um, actual casino uh, games, like real money. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was very interesting. I applied and I got in. And back then there were no schools for casino, like for marketing or anything right. like that so my peers just taught me everything I knew back then and so I grew up from real money and uh, black hat PPC um, <laughs> it, it was really interesting it opened my mind to thinking creatively and trying new things and never getting a no as an answer which is super Israeli I'm Israeli um, and um from there, I kind of, I, I moved to uh, a marketing agency, which uh, was a very short period of time because I didn't like it. Um, and a friend that worked at the first company that I mentioned um, suggested that I apply for Play Tika. And when, yeah. uh, and I was like, maybe, <laughs> but that changed the course of my life because um, I met amazing people there and um, the, the most uh, impactful person that I met there was my boss, Noga Hoppering, which um, later moved to SciPlay and um, we, we ended up <laughs> in a place <laughs> where I also moved to SciPlay. Um, and I have been here for oh, over five years, almost six years. Um, in very different roles, I started at a small game, 88 Fortunes, um, being the marketing lead and um, establishing the marketing activity from the first dollar. We, when I joined 88 Fortunes as a slot game, and it was a tech launch, and that was super interesting. It was a school, um, and for me, of, of how to build the, the strategy from, from day one. Um, a few years later, I got an offer to move to the States and uh, join Goldfish Casino within SciPlay. Um, so my family and I relocated about a year ago to the States, to Austin, Texas. Um, and a couple of months ago, I was summoned or called to move to Jackpot Party, our biggest and largest game um, as a director on monetization, specifically focused on players ops. Um, so of course I immediately said yes. Um, so I'm a lot in, like I, I travel a lot to Cedar Falls <laughs> to be with my team. Um, so I guess that's that in a nutshell. <laughs> that's awesome. So is the, um, sorry, jackpot party actually based in Cedar Falls then? It is, yeah. Fine. It's a huge team, yeah. That's great. Um, okay, so I have so many questions. Um, I'm going to endeavor to put them into some some semblance of coherence. Um, let's start with uh, 
can you just tell me a little bit about side play? Like it's been around for 20 years. It's you know out there, but I don't really feel like I hear that much about side play in like the, the regular gaming space. So like, give me the lowdown. Like what is side play? Like, what's it like to work there? Um, I'll start at the end. Like in, in the last part of the question is so much fun. I think we're, Sideplay's um, biggest advantage in the market is that um, we work with actual um, slot games that are from the casino floor. We are uh, we work with scientific game slots, and so our player base basically knows the the slots that they're looking for. They look for us, and then they want to take the experience that they have in the casino in Vegas or any any other casino to their mobile phones i i was almost about to say to bed but basically to everywhere <laughs> probably you know <laughs> to, to the bed to the bathroom you know wherever you want to play exactly yeah so that is our biggest advan- advantage um uh th- the brand that we give to our players like for example jackpot party goldfish 80 fortunes all of those quick hit is another huge game that we have so all these apps contain with them slots and 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 games that the, the players know from the casino floor um as for what what we are as a company i think we're a very very focused uh we're very focused um on our players and our employees, so people first type of mentality, uh, whoever they are, and we're basically here to serve. I, as as a manager, I'm here to serve my employees and my players, and I think there's a lot of emphasis and focus on um, mel- mental health, um, uh, great partnerships, great communication, so just making sure people are excited and energized when they come to work. Um, for me, all of those things are culture. Um, that's not to say that we don't have happy hours, parties and uh, events and snacks all over the offices around the world. Of course we do, but for me, the first part was is the actual essence of our culture. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, next question. You said player ops. What is player ops? Yeah. So we differentiate between, uh, in the monetization world, we, dif- and we have a separation between um, the economy part of it and the live ops, the CRM, social media, social media communication. Um, so we are, because Jackpot Party specifically, but is such a huge game, we wanted to focus and make sure that we put the right attention and the right People um, focus on, on on those different aspects. And mm-hmm. both of those um, aspects have teams that support all of that and all that goes into that. So, yeah. So if I need to give examples of like what, what I focus on and what my team focuses on is basically making sure that the monthly calendar is always planned ahead and that we are hitting everything that is exciting and giving the player a new and engaging experience almost on a ba- on a daily basis where yep. um everything that supports that including crm social media all of that kind of ties into that together but a lot of the times we find and please stop me if i'm <laughs> if i'm rambling but a lot of the times we find that we have great ideas for example we want to surface a new type of live ops event for Thanksgiving, just as an example, but we're missing some tech to support that creative idea, then then we would go and kind of have a development pod uh, work on that and and develop that. So everything needs to kind of align and and be on time, specifically when we're targeting holidays because we can't move that date. So, <laughs> so there's a lot that goes into that and um, a lot of process and focus and they're on the right things and a lot of prioritization and stuff so i guess um that's that's like like player ops from how we look at it yeah here's a question so you know uh, i think a lot of people understand this idea of you know planning ahead and whatnot um I know some people that try to plan their calendars like three months ahead. Some people are one month. Some people are chasing the current week. Um, 
you know, what have you found is a reasonable time frame to be able to, you know, react to what players want and, you know, plan reasonably, but also a forward of like, hey, if I need to do something technically to run this thing on Thanksgiving, like how long ahead do you need that? Or do you guys do like a blended approach where it's like, hey, for, for big holidays, we're going to think six months out and make sure that like we're kind of planning for that, but like more of the day-to-day, we fill in the calendar only like a month ahead or something like that. So I think it's 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 the latter. It's like, it, it's exactly how you you said it. Um, when 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 the teams that I run are established, I aim to to be at a point where the big chunks, the the holidays, the for us the the, the main content is slots. So uh, uh, an epic slot release, something like something big that is happening and that has a certain date. I want to be planned six months ahead. I'm not saying that that happens on every game team because um, there's need to. There, we we need to build this um, and it's not easy to get to a point where you know exactly what you're going to do six months ahead it's not an easy task but it it is the inspiration and it is it is the the goal that I always have in mind because it allows us to plan all the engineering stuff and it allows for a very healthy um, cadence of development both with art and and engineering um, and then in my in my metaphor it's like the big rocks and then the smaller rocks and (laughs) so the smaller ones right are like three months ahead where uh maybe the the less epic slots or uh a new feature that the the product team is giving to me and i'm gonna do some reskins for that so those are like three months ahead and then i have and also it depends how long of art how long the art team needs in order to create something like a reskin for something. So it always always depends. And we kind of assess how long does things take. And based on that, we reverse engineer when we need to ask for those things. Um, the, the smaller things, the pop-ups, um, we are trying to be like about 45 days ahead because I feel like that gives us a lot of time to pivot if we need. Yep. And the smaller things are easier to attack the gaps that are happening immediately. Like if I see a drop in a KPI, then it's easier for me to pivot and, and change something within the 45 days time period. But um, we don't leave the calendar at 45 and say, yeah, it's perfect. We always like on a weekly and daily basis, look at everything and make sure that we're as aggressive as we need to be uh, in order to hit our goals. Um, and I always kind of strive for the health of the team um, to be 90% planned and only 10% changes in the last minute, uh, specifically for the amazing config people and the QA people that then need to go and actually do all the changes when we come up with, with a pivot. So um, in order to keep a happy and healthy team um, that is still reactive and very much on top of things, I, I try to keep a balance of 90 to 10 percent. Makes sense. So one thing that you talked about, um, which I don't know why I've never really thought about this before, um, but you kind of talked about calendar planning of how long do we need from a dev perspective to do that? How long do we need from an art perspective to do that? I'm assuming now maybe you're just super smart and way smarter than me, which could be the case, um, but you might not perfectly know how long a dev project or a art project might be to do like a reskin or something. Um, so I'm curious, like who should be in the room when you're doing like a calendar review or like a calendar planning? And Yeah, so I am super lucky to have amazing uh, an amazing producer and, and like a live ops producer in my in the team. Um, that basically runs things very, very, (laughs) she's very on top of things. Um, We actually are growing to more live ops producers because of the capacity that we just are increasing and increasing. And because we see such great like impact through the things that we're doing as a team. Um, So first of all, I lean very heavily on the producers. And as I said earlier, I don't, I don't just in, like come up with how long uh, before I need to ask for stuff. What we did is I went back and identified the things that we're doing 
this this feature for for it to be rescanned i need six weeks for this i need four weeks for this i need two and based on that she's like i have the capacity for october for example to do this this and this because we're this far ahead i'm just throwing out dates and stuff um and same goes to to featuring like if i uh if we're coming up with an idea or a gap that we need to solve with engineering we then go and ask, uh, we, we sit again in the room with the producers, but with the engineers themselves, and they give us a time estimate after they understand exactly what we need. And based on that, we prioritize things on the roadmap of, of, of the live ops engineering pod. So does that answer your question? <laughs> Basically producers and engineers, based in, producers, engineers, and art based on what we're asking for. So um, there's a article that one of my uh, friends wrote that I love that's out there uh, that's titled Homescapes is a Masterclass in Live Ops. And I reference this a lot because I really like it. Um, but um, in there, what I've really enjoyed is that they really seem to know their players and when they have time during the week to play the game. And if you look at the calendar from like Monday to Thursday, they have, you know, usually one, three, maybe four events that are kind of running simultaneously throughout the week, but they're all very easy events. It's like log in, play the game one time. You get some, you know, nice reward. It's almost like you're punishing yourself if you don't log in and do that. Um, but then the weekend comes like Friday, Saturday, and they have these like super intensive monetization events where it's like you win 10 games in a row to get this really big reward. And you know that it's a match three games. So they monetize with the plus five moves which you know, doesn't really have that big of an effect for most people most of the time. But by the time you're on game nine or game 10, you, you don't want to lose that just need one more move. And it's yeah. like, oh, do I really want to restart and do all of that again? Well, I can because it's the weekend and I have time, but do I want to? I could just spend a little money now. Um, and it's really catered towards like when they have time to actually play the game. Um, so I'm kind of curious, like, do you guys do any of that sort of, you know, behavioral analysis to figure out, hey, our players like to play a lot during this time frame. So try to have an event that matches that time frame that kind of matches their play style. We sure do. Um, we have we have a meta feature that is always in the game with the easy daily tasks. Um, and it's called Honeydew specifically for Jackpot Party. And it basically has five to six um, uh, tasks for you. And they're super easy. Basically, if you play, you will complete them. Like it, you, you really have to luck, luck out in, in order to not complete it. Uh, in addition to that, we add a lot of smaller events uh, for the weekdays because very, like very uh, similar to how you describe it, our players are also coming for shorter sessions and and play less during the weekdays. Um, and so on holidays and weekends, we kind of lean more heavily into our live ops events and and run four days events with very, a lot more difficult <laughs> uh, tasks. Um, and we are trying to be as creative and, um, and interesting and engaging for our players in order to give them a really good and, and big reward to um to to just make sure that they have a reason to uh, play and engage with our um, tasks um so uh yeah. <laughs> yeah we really we really focus on days of the week and time of day that is also a thing mm -hmm. the evenings are stronger for us and so we make sure that we hit um, more exciting things on, on the, on the peak of the days and holidays, holidays are big. Yeah. Do you do any sort of like time-based segmentation of stuff? Like, you know, if I notice, you know, you might have a, you know, a guy or a gal that's working the night shift that often plays at like 2 a.m., and that's their you know, normal play time compared to like 7 p.m. So do you ever like segment players? So, this event starts for players that typically play at seven, at seven, and for the players that play at two a.m. or nine a.m. or whatnot, they kind of get that event that starts there. So, not on a player-based granularity that is too much, but definitely looking at uh, a group 
like the the entire population or specifically we're focused on the US time zone but if we want to go and hit another geo location or something like that we would diversify and then take it and put it in the right time zone for the, those players um in order to kind of um hit where where they're picking and um there's a lot more that can be done with this but it requires a lot of planning and um i'm not saying that's not a great idea it is uh it just requires a lot of config tools and config uh efforts so um there's a lot that goes to that and we only we always have to consider the roi like is it worth to invest all of this great ideas always come but we need to make sure that um the return on the investment even if it's time of of configuration and yeah. QA. people people that, time has has real value most people don't think about that but it does <laughs> it's so important because when you run a business um that's part of the things that you have to take into consideration yeah your most important cost uh, <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, um, I have a few more questions along this train, but I actually wanted to take a step back because um, I don't know. I've just talked to a number of people lately that really haven't fully gotten the the live ops suite of things. They weren't brought up in Playtika, let's say. Um, here's a basic question: um, Walk me through how, let's say, a casino game normally makes money. And then how could you do, let's even just give me like a simple live ops example of how you could maybe make more money with that, just to kind of help people wrap their, their mind around how a live ops event could work. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I'm not going to reveal any like top secrets. <laughs> it's it's I tried, I tried to keep it basic, but if you want to share some top <laughs> secrets, you know, we're all ears. So we separate between core loop mechanism to, uh, to to in to live ops and the core loop of of casino or specifically slots is spin earn spend by spinning again and that is the that is the main thing everyone every product manager live ops manager that i met that tried to take away from that has lost money the most important thing for a slot player is the slot that's very important if if anyone wants to take one thing from this is slot players wants to play slots <laughs> i know it sounds trivial but that's actually a learning that takes a lot of time because everyone comes with a great idea of a feature but when the features take away from the for loop mechanism we lose so that's that that's the first thing that's how we make money basically every slot has uh an rtp the RTP is usually, if you want to make money, less than 100%. So it can vary from in the casino floor from 86% to 90 something percent. But the idea is, is that it's less than 100 because that means that if you're um, putting, a, putting in a 100 cent bet, um, the casino will take, will give you back in, on average not 90 something percent of cents back of that yep. uh, just as an example so that is how you make money now that doesn't mean that every spin you will get that 90 something percent that just means that on average eventually uh you will that would be the return on your investment um and that's how we make money um as a mobile game because we're not a real casino we are not this that's not we're not a gambling it's not um as it is in the casino you don't actually take money back you you are getting free coins or you buy extra coins um in order to extend your your session and you invest those in the slots by betting um there's a range of bets that you can have on every slot machine and by losing those those coins gradually and over time, of course, a lot of people win, but eventually you'll lose your coins. You'll get to a place where you have to either wait for your next free coins or buy again. Mm -hmm. So that's the business. Now, yep. what we do with Life Ops is a simple example would be, I am giving you a task and I'm telling you, if you spend 100 times, 
um, in a minimum bet that is a little bit higher than your average bet. Um, so I'm pushing you up um, and from your comfort zone. I will give you a huge reward. So I promise you something. I may tell you in advance what that is or not. That's up to us as a, as a business and depends on what type of players we have. And that's, that's how you start being more evolved. That's how you start testing stuff. What works best for your players? And that's how you know start to learn your players. And by doing those 100 spins, but on a, a little bit higher of a bet than you're comfortable with, I am not guaranteeing, but I have a bigger chance of getting you quicker to our coins. So if you usually uh, would get through those 100 spins easily because your bet is lower than what I'm asking you to do, now you're gonna get it. You're get it, You're gonna get to eighty spins, and you have a friction point. Um, the friction point is: Do I want to um, buy in order to get that re buy coins in order to get that the that, that uh, reward, or not? Um, my job is to make sure that you think that that reward is valuable in order for you to extend your session. I I used to have. Um, a boss that says that friction point, make it and not frustrating, but exciting and inviting. That is the magic. <laughs> if I get to like 80 spins and I've got to do, I don't know, a million coins per spin or something. And I see that there's a hundred million coins there. then it's like, well, if I just buy those 20 million coins right now, I'm going to get like a five times return on my you know, investment kind of a thing. Yes. Um, when it's too easy of a math, I think it's, um, it's, it's really tricky to nail it down because then you have to be super micro segmented and make sure that you have everything correctly. I'm not saying it's impossible. Um, so, because a player would say it's not only investing the extra 20 um, K in order to get the 20 spins, it's, also everything that I invested so far. So is mm -hmm. that 100K enough for me for all this investment? Then you have to be more sophisticated and, and, and hiding or making sure that basically making sure that the reward is worth it for the players to make, to make that effort. Um, and, and, and that requires a lot of testing. Um, there's no one answer that fits everyone. Um, and, and I find that super exciting. Like, <laughs> it's like a riddle, like that you're always trying to solve, like what would work for my players as opposed to the, the, the other games player or, or to this segment versus the other segment. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, actually, on that note, let's talk a little bit about segments. Um, so, you know, what would be a good example of segmentation? Because I, you know, I hear people talking about segmentation a lot in gaming, but I don't know that very many actually do segmentation or maybe do it well. Um, so do you have any, any examples of ways that maybe you split players into a segment that has worked really poorly or on the contrary, like ways that you split players into a segment that has worked really well? Um, I want to say, in all honesty, that... I feel like we have a long way to go with segmentations. Um, we have gone several ways to try and analyze our, our uh, player base and trying to find, like work with analytics to find um, the players that are leaning more heavily on weekdays or the play or versus, versus weekends or the players that prefer auto spin versus spinning spin after spin that like, trying to separate them and trying to put them into categories. Um, it's a very heavy lifting on the analytics side and then painting them or coloring them in the database and, and use that in order to uh, pull, leverage that. A really good and interesting segmentation thing that we're trying right now is, um, is is the with CRM actually? Um, we have tested through throughout the past couple of months um, 
and and before that and the and in goldfish the other game teams that game game team that i were was at for over a year we've tested like groups of of about of of time on not time on app but just um seniority sorry i forgot the mm -hmm. word seniority in our games in order to segment players and see what type of coin rewards work best for them in order to get them back into the game or um um, or just keep them into the game. So retention or preventing churn. Um, and there's, a, there's a lot of things that went poorly, for example, trying to get back people, um, that, um, ha haven't played for five days. Uh, we have, we, we sent, we, we, at, at the beginning, we just, arbitrarily decided on that and we send this coin amount and then we increased it but we couldn't get them back so we changed approaches and we went to a shorter period of time we understood that that time window is we lost that player it's it's and i'm just saying five is as is, is a random number but we lost the player um and so we need to shorten that window and we test and test and test it until we found the right value of coins that we want to give and the right time in order to hit that so that we're getting the most players back. So um, that's just one example of a lot of testing that went in the beginning was it just didn't work and yeah. but we continued iterating on it until we found something that works for our game. And then when we moved from Goldfish to Jackpot Party, we we're like, it doesn't mean that if it worked in one game team, then that's the exact same um, equation that would work for Jackpot Party's players. So again, yep. testing, 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 and making sure that that segmentation works best best for um, uh, retention, as an example. Yeah. So you know, maybe a different way to think about it is to start with the business goal of what thing are you trying to influence or to affect or to change. Um, and then you can try breaking players up into different sorts of groups and giving them different sorts of things to try to actually positively impact that business goal in whatever way you're trying to do it. Absolutely. And one of the things that I learned um, this past year for, from a UX consultant that we had here is that you have to start with a theory. It, try to have a good enough theory that is based on what you think you, you know about your players and then test it, test it, test it, test it until you prove it right or wrong. Um, but you have to start somewhere. <laughs> so um, that was a very eye-opening experience for me because I was like, well, we have to base everything on data. And she's like, well, let's try to look at it differently. Start with a theory and prove your theory because that's um, that's how, um, um, like the methodology, the methodology that she worked with, and I, I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, um, appreciate that. Um, just jumping back a little bit to the people that are maybe like getting started with live ops, and maybe like heard all this like crazy calendar planning and like something new every single day, and you know all this stuff. Um, you know if if you and I were to start a new, well, we'll make it a casino game so you're familiar with it, you know, today and we have no live ops, um, what would be like, what would be like a good starting point or like a good first step for, you know, somebody that's just trying to like get into live ops? Um, in my opinion, is understand your game really well um, and then understand what the competitors are doing. Um, Whenever I have a new employee, no matter if it's live ops or anything else, I tell them, use the first month to play the game and then don't stop. But later, like I play every day my game and all uh, and all the 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 main competitors that that I think I, I need to 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 look at. But later, it's really hard to find time to play the games. Uh, but the beginning, understand what you're selling, right? Because it's it's really easy to assume a lot of things and um if you don't understand your game i think it's really hard to build good live ops it's it's easy to uh start getting in love with your ideas and think that 
you have a creative idea and so that's a good idea but if you don't understand the business model if you don't understand your players then um you're not you're not hitting i don't think you'll be able to hit the right kpis and that's the second thing if you're like the first thing is understand your your game understand your players but then analyze what are the gaps or or get help understanding what are the gaps that you're trying to solve what is the kpi that you're trying to move obviously everything translates into revenue but what are the pre preliminary kpis that you're trying to move where where is, it, is the gap and how are you going to solve for that and based on that only then it come up with your first live ops events. Very interesting. I don't think I would have taken that approach, but I like it. What uh, would you have done? What would I have done? Well, anytime that I think of uh, live ops or do any sort of like monetization consulting work, I mean, I think the first thing that I like to look at in a game is like, do you at least have stable retention and do you at least have like a stable core monetization metric? Cause if you don't have that, you're going to, you know, mess everything up. Like, yeah, I could maybe make you some money by doing some special offers and stuff, but it's probably going to destroy your economy and, and people are going to just going to get addicted to that. And it's like, you know, <laughs> the, the flash sales, it's, it's not a good sustainable model. Um, so I like to look at that core business model. Um, and if I'm thinking about live ops, there's usually, two realms of things that I'm thinking about. Um, and again, maybe this is the business model, but like the first one would be, um, is it like an engagement retention type thing? Or um, I forget the, the name of the metric. Somebody coined it the other day. It's like, how often do they come back? Like, are they coming into the game every single day? And that was like their core metric over retention. I loved that. I need to remember what it is. Um, like the average retention? Yeah, it's like consistency or something like you know do they come back every single day um so you know i think some live ops events can be oriented towards that which is like you know players love this idea of new and surprises so i i want to come back every day because there's always some new surprise or something interesting for me to check out i don't know what's coming tomorrow so i better log in and see um that's kind of almost the appeal of tiktok and instagram right? like you never know what's going to be in there so you always want to just like open it up and see, right? Um, email Slack does that to us too. Um, but then if I'm on the monetization side of things, if I've got that good core aspect, I try to think about, well, how can I add a live ops event such that I can get them to do more of that core or maybe just a little bit more of that core than they do before. So as you kind of outlined, you know, maybe they spin 80 times and they bet this. So I'm going to do a hundred times and bet a little bit more. Or, you know, if I was designing something in, let's say, Royal Match, and I see, hey, they play three games on average per day. Well, um, I want to try to get them to five. So I'll make some sort of live ops event where they, you know, collect 60 of the 100 required gems or whatever, you know, they're trying to do. And now they're like, well, 60% of the way towards that really big, awesome thing that I want. By the way, you have to know what they want. Um, and it's like, well, I might as well just like play two more levels, like just a little bit more to get that thing that I pretty much done. Um, and now there's two more levels that are played, two more opportunities for the plus five moves, two more opportunities for that monetization kind of thing to happen. But you have to have that core monetization layer first is, is how I like to approach it. I think you're saying, um, I think you're saying what I'm saying, but your your answer is like the the next level. Once you understood the gap, because you said you either do this or do this, depending on of what I'm trying to solve, right? You mm -hmm. first need to identify what you're trying to solve. And then you gave a lot of examples of things of that. So for me, I think we're saying the same thing as just as just like what are what are what yeah. is the, the the order of things? What what are I think understanding what you're trying to solve, and you mentioned three examples of things that you're trying to solve and how you're going to solve them. But understanding that is the core, because if you don't understand what you're trying to solve, you're just throwing spaghetti on the wall. Yeah. Okay. So here's a question that like goes deeper beyond that, that I often am struggling with. Um, okay. Well, I think we both said this of like, I can do a live ops event, but I have to know what's valuable to the players. So how have you like 
is it literally just tons and tons of experimentation or have you ever been able to figure out like what is actually valuable to players or players in this segment? Um, well, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So for a slot player, the currency is coins. So that's very valuable. The question is how much? Um, and that is um, easy for a slot game because of the RTP. Um, if, if the slots are giving, let's just say 90%, then I can give anywhere between zero to about like nine and a half percent back to the player with still leaving some room for me to, to, to gain money from this experience. So anything in the betweens, I can give back to the player. So if I'm giving them a task and it takes them 1 million coins to complete that, I, I will give them the maximum that I can without losing on their work, the investment. Yeah. So, but with that said, I still, I'm a very, very strong on one coin reward and that's it. Um, you should continue testing and specifically when you have going back to segmentation, right? So um, a really great use case of segmentation in, in Jackpot Party um, is based on star powers. So star power basically segments the population of our game into 15 categories. Um, and that is being calculated on a daily basis. And that takes into account the bets that you did yesterday. And based on that, it gives you a task and a reward that is appropriate to what you invested yesterday. So that is a really great example of segmentation and answers the question of how do you know what to reward your player? Mm -hmm. Because it all ties to your experience. I don't want to give you too many coins. I don't want to make you make you feel offended by too little of coins so there's a balance there yeah so i will admit that i've never really played too deeply into a casino game uh, I've, I've played them but never like super deeply so this might be a super amateur question um but you know are there ever any rewards like on, on your side that are more valuable or equally valuable to coins? Like, you know, have you guys ever made like items and it could even be, you know, related to the core aspect of like double your next jackpot reward or 10 free spins or, you know, something like that. Like there are, there, are, yes, absolutely. There are so many rewards and specifically in jackpot party. So we have a second currency called honey bucks and you can unlock things with using honey bucks. So we can reward that. We have um, battle pass, we call it honey pass and uh, the, the currency there are gems. So we can reward that or give you a live ops event that if you complete it today only the, your gems are doubled um or things like that we also have a feature that is a bingo feature that once you complete a board you get a lot of coins and so we can reward bingo balls um so, so and those are just some of the examples we have other things that we can reward in game um so a lot of things that are just loops that are happening around the core loop uh, yeah. basically meta loops in order to uh, engage the player and not always bore them with just giving them coins. But that's also the starts the complexity of live ops because you can then start having another layer of events that, for example, bingo balls. Uh, this day, I'm going to give you a lot of bingo balls, but the next day I'm going to take away because I'm going to ask you to invest them in order to collect coins. But you're going to, the day after that, I'm going to tell you invest a lot of coins by betting up. And so in order to get, to get bingo balls or honey bucks or so this, there's a loop that keeps you very, very interested and gives you a motivation to come every day and discover what's new in the game. And that's the exciting part. <laughs> Sounds great. I love it. Uh, but, 
you always got to remember the core loop of playing slots. You can't mess with that. Everything comes back to that, right? You see, I'm a great teacher. <laughs> I've learned, I've learned so much already. Um, well, uh, this is great. Well, Daphna, I know we're pretty much out of time here. So we've got about time for maybe like one, one question left. And I always like to ask because it is the Master Retention podcast, you know, um, what's one tip or trick or lesson you've learned over the years to increase retention? Like, how do you keep your players playing for longer? Huh, that's a very interesting question. I think, I think we are lucky because we build games. And so there's always that expectation of what, what will happen tomorrow? What am I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say like leaning into the FOMO of what am I missing? Because I know that this game always rewards something amazing every single day. So what am I missing if I'm not logging in? For, for me, that's the magic. And that's what keeps player coming day after day. That's great. I love it. Um, well, Daphna, if folks do want to get in contact with you, if any questions or, you know, maybe they're curious about side play, I, I assume you guys are probably hiring. And so if it sounded like <laughs> a cool place to work, um, what's, a, what's a good way to do that? Um, LinkedIn, always. Daphna, been on my name. Um, I always answer to everyone. And uh, through the side play site uh, and careers, there are all the sites that we have, uh, which are Cedar Falls, Austin, Finland, Turkey, Israel, um, Ukraine, um, and India. Um, so many uh, sites and so many opportunities. Um, we have so many open recs because we're growing uh, constantly. And it's just um, something that I really recommend trying to do, <laughs> join SciPlay. <laughs> Love it. Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds like if you want to learn live ops, like I kid you not, the stuff that you just kind of outlined there of how it all works together, there's so few games that actually really do that well. So if you want to learn live ops, go here. <laughs> all right. Well, Daphna, thank you so much for joining and, and hopefully we can talk soon. Thank you for having me. Bye.